Hey everybody, welcome back to the Motor One channel. Again, we wanna thank you for sticking with us, especially during this time where we can't get out there and film as many cars in person, but that doesn't mean we can't do cool things. Um, and today is certainly part of that. We are very excited to take a closer look at the 2022 Volkswagen GTI. And it's not just going to be me doing this first look, I'm gonna bring on one of Motor One's newest and my favorite editor, uh, Brett Evans. So Brett, thanks for joining us. Hey, thanks for the invite. Um, you know personally that I'm a huge GTI fanboy. So basically what I need as we go through the details of the design and take a closer look at the car, and especially when we get to the performance figures, um, keep me honest and bring me back down to earth because we got a whole bunch of new information on the 2022 GTI today. And I'm so stoked to go through all the details with you um, and kind of break it down from there. I'll be there to uh, throw some water on your fire. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so Brett and I both wrote articles as well, which are over on motorone.com, um, shed some light on the GTI's future, and then um, some on-paper details about the car's performance figures, some of the software, some of the new hardware. There's a lot to uncover. Um, but we should kind of start with the top of it all, which is something you focused on in your article. It's a 2022 model year. We yeah. kind of... 21, but today Volkswagen confirmed to us um, that both the Golf R and the GTI will be coming to the U.S. as 22 MYs. Yeah, I kind of wonder if part of it has to do with um, the switch that they're making. The you know the Mark 8 is going to be produced exclusively in Wolfsburg, so the Puebla plant is completely shifting away from Golf production right. altogether. And so I kind of wonder if there's some kind of you know supply chain logistics that they had to work through with exporting vehicles across the Atlantic versus across the Southern border. So, you know, kind of interesting. Yeah, I mean, we spoke with some Volkswagen executives today and they didn't really say specifically that COVID related things are delaying the car, but they're yeah. kind of keeping an eye on everything. And of course, the way they're handling it all right now, anything can change at any given time. But as of now, we have Volkswagen on the record saying that the next gen Mark 8 GTI will come to the US um, sometime at the end of next year as a 22 model year. Um, we saw this car make its debut at the Geneva Motor Show that never happened. So we've all seen what it looks like. Um, but why don't you and I go through some of the details and kind of put some images on the screen as we do so. Yeah, let's do it. What are your initial thoughts on this thing? Um, you know, I, ha I have to say I don't love it. Um, I think the, uh, the Mark 7. Okay, we're done here. <laughs> Whatever. I have to say, I think the Mark 7 GTI nailed it. I think it was just like a really crisply styled, very well done hot hatch. Um, there are a few things I don't love about the Mark 8. I don't really love the scalloped headlights. Um, but that said, there are actually things that I really like about it. I like the twist. Um, 18 inch wheels, I think are very cool. It's like a very nice modern update on wheels that date all the way back to the Mark 5 GTI. And then um, I also like the little five LEDs in the grill. And I like the full width LED light bar across um, across the front of the car. I think there's some really interesting details, um, but I, overall, I just wish it was a little more crisp. It just looks a little too uh, fussy to me. I think you hit on a really good point right away, and that's wheel. Um, there's three wheel sizes and five wheel options. So you can see them on the screen right now. Um, the 19s look awesome. And when you put those 19s on the car, which we've seen a couple images of, it gives it a completely different stance. Um, the the lighting signature in the grill is probably my favorite. I guess you know the front fascia, I should say. Um, but I'm with you. the The initial time I saw this GTI, I didn't think it was that different from the base Golf, or not different enough to make me fall in love with it. But as I'm seeing more images of it, and today for the first time some video of it, I like it a lot more. And I think I remember feeling the same way about the Mark Seven, thinking that I liked the Mark Six better, and then you know after three months of seeing them on the road. I really like the Mark seven a lot. So I'm going right. to reserve judgment till I can actually see it, you know, driving down the road, but um, you know, and I do like it. And that said, I actually kind of think that they did a really good job making the base wheel option. That 17 inch wheel option mm. looks kind of special. Like it doesn't, you know, some of these smaller wheels kind of can look like donuts sometimes. And I think that one looks pretty special. I'd like to see it under the car, you know, with maybe some meaty sidewall and stuff like that. But yeah, they've, they've done some good work for sure. Right, I agree. 
I don't know if you want to mention this yet, but they have there have been some spy shots rolling around of what looks like probably a G, GTI TCR that has like larger cross drilled rotors and stuff like that, and that might be a pretty interesting product too if that makes it to the United States. I think that'll be yeah. pretty pretty sweet balance between you know the Golf R and the GTI, giving you a little more handling, a little more balance, and a little more poise without spending Golf R money. And it's worth mentioning, you can read this in Brett's story as well on Motor One, uh, the TCR and club sports or any potential, nothing's been confirmed yet, but any potential special edition of the GTI, Volkswagen said they're working hard to bring to the US. They're not willing to confirm anything just yet, but they said the Mark 7 was a really successful generation of the car for the US market. So they're basically fighting like hell to take all those really cool European editions and maybe bring them to the US, um, maybe including that TCR. Yeah. That's all good stuff. We like that. Um, more on the exterior in just a bit, especially concerning performance, but let's take a quick look at the interior and dive a little deeper into that. Quick specs on the interior, 10.2 inch uh, digital cockpit, 10 inch navigation is optional. And those are the headlines. Folks, I'm gonna put it in quotes. Innovision, I don't even know how to pronounce it. It's their weird word of saying that you take those two screens and you're supposed to be immersed in this virtual world. What are your thoughts on the way they redid the cabin? It follows a lot of modern trends, the you know the floating tablet style infotainment screen and fully digital instrument cluster. You know, obviously people are going to draw comparisons with Audi virtual cockpit and yeah. some of these other some of these other features. I think they've absolutely nailed it. I think it's really really good. I love that they you know they've kept some of the traditional GTI appeal like red accents throughout the interior you get these plaid gorgeous seats, plaid plaid seats. Seats. Um, anyone who orders GTIs with leather they just they're morons the plaid is the way to go with that it's such a good design it's so give nice. the people what they want with the plaid seats I'm glad you mentioned the leather though because we found out today some new stuff on the interior if you do opt for the optional leather seats you get ventilated seats which is nice so heated comes standard on the plaid which of course I would order when I inevitably get this car at some point anyway um, and a heated steering wheel is standard as well so I think you said it exactly right they're trying to make it more Audi like than it's ever been before yeah. um, and if you look at the images of the Audi a3 which we just saw a couple weeks after the GTI there's a lot of similarities between the cabins definitely definitely can see some of the common platform sharing which in Volkswagen's case is not a bad thing at all that's really pretty wonderful that they can create a you know relatively affordable hot hatch and have it be compared to an Audi A3 is pretty impressive. 30 color ambient lighting. There's the shift by wire DSG transmission as an option. Now it almost reminds me of like the 992 911 yeah. with the little like razor like look to it. Not completely sold on that, but I do like the way they integrated uh, the center console and how it's sort of done just in a clean line like that. One thing that I really do like and that I, have been thinking for years is, you know, I prefer manual transmissions most definitely, but if you're going to get an automatic, there's no reason it needs to have this big clunky shifter in the center console. And by converting sure. to these smaller, you know, more delicate, more, you know, electronically based shift selectors, you're opening up so much more storage space and making a much more practical product, which I really like. And now we get to maybe the best stuff yet. And this is a lot of what we found out today when we talked with uh, Volkswagen's engineers on the car. And that is all the performance data. So mm -hmm. some, what I think to be really exciting stuff going on here. Let's start with the headlines. So we have a now confirmed for the US market, 242 horsepower, 273 pound feet of torque. So if you look at the 2020 GTI, uh, that's in the States that's up from 228 horsepower. And I think it's up like 15 pound feet of torque as well. So not huge gains there. I've talked to a couple of people. Um, they're somewhat disappointed with that, but to me, it makes sense knowing that there could be hotter versions of the GTI coming. And of course you have to make space for the Golf R as well. Mm -hmm. Um, in addition to that, we still have a standard limited slip differential on the car, just like we do on the Mark 7. And then we can talk in depth about the driving dynamics manager. And this is something that I've studied today, like I haven't studied something in a very long time. But the driving dynamics manager is basically like the GTI's brain. Mm -hmm. So like we see in 
really mostly other German vehicles, especially luxury vehicles. This is taking all of the car's performance parameters and kind of centralizing it. Um, and this comes standard on the car. So mm -hmm. it can mess with the brakes, it can break the inside wheel, it can mess with the steering input, and it can monitor the adaptive dampers um, hundreds of times per second to make the car adjust in real time. Mm -hmm. now, what did you think when you heard of all of this, especially as it becomes standard kit in GTI? I mean, that's pretty. That's what's pretty cool is I feel like a lot of um, at this price point, which we don't have official pricing yet, but at this at this mm -hmm. estimated price point, you know, a lot of these features you really have to pay a lot more. You can't. I don't think you can get a similar system in something like the Civic Si. Um, and some of the GTI's competitors. And so you're really getting, honestly, like BMW M, Audi, you know, motorsport levels of customization and things like that on a relatively entry level sports car, which I think is pretty awesome for sure. Yeah, um, compared to a Mark Seven performance, it's the same power output. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Volkswagen kind of contextualize this for us today by saying they took a Mark Seven performance and a Mark 8 GTI on identical tires and identical power output. We'll roll this footage right now for everybody to see. Um, their test driver went four seconds quicker with a Mark 8 around a two mile track. Mm -hmm. That's significant. I mean, that's a good amount of time to make up in a car with identical power outputs, identical tires, really just showing um, that this car can put down power a lot better than the Mark 7 ever could. Definitely, definitely true. And for it still to be, you know, dedicated front drive architecture and everything like that, for it to have that kind of poise, you know, obviously we need to drive it ourselves before we can make any definitive mm -hmm. statements, but it really seems like it probably is going to be pretty, you know, pretty, pretty well composed and pretty well sorted, especially given how nice the Mark 7 is already. Um, this one could be a pretty impressive little machine. Totally agree. I mean, you can see in the footage, this guy's absolutely mobbing this thing around the track. He's sliding it around and it does look composed. Obviously, we wish that we could drive it ourselves sometime soon, but for now, uh, we'll take Volkswagen's word for it. Maybe the, the sneakiest, but also most exciting piece of news we got today is that there is a Michelin tire option mm -hmm. that they're offering with Margate. I mean, that's like the brass ring of performance tires. I think they're going to be the, it's the Pilot Sport Cup 2. Which Pilot is, Sport Cup 2, which is going to be available on the 19-inch wheel, uh, we think is an a la carte option, just the tire. Um, and that track test that Volkswagen did comparing Mark 7 to Mark 8, they were wearing the identical Potenza tires, the Bridgestones, which come um, on the the car standard. And then the, the Michelin wasn't even part of that. That's something you can opt for completely different. Yeah, so that's just going to expand the car's performance envelope even more and give you a little more, little more grip, a little more, you know, tenacity through the corners and on corner exit too, which is where a lot of front drive cars struggle is, is you can't get the power down fast enough. And I don't think that's going to be an issue with the Mark 8. Yeah, 5% stiffer springs in the front and 15% stiffer spring rate in the rear. They revised that. Um, the architecture of the suspension has been revised in the front and the back as well. So it seems like they really went through and tried to make this uh, quite a better handler than the Mark mm -hmm. 7. Of course, when the, the horsepower gains are that modest, you're not going to come out and say, oh, you know, it feels completely different from a power perspective. Um, but they tore this thing apart and really tried to make it a better handler, which I can completely respect. Well, it doesn't totally seem to me like um, it's a completely drastically different recipe, you know, like I think the transition from Mark IV to Mark V was pretty significant. Um, yeah. And since then, I feel like they've just kind of been taking this really successful formula and just refining it every few years. And so I think, you know, the Mark is still going to feel very familiar and very accessible to current GTI owners, but it's also going to be that much better, just turning it up to 11 in every respect, which would be pretty cool, except for styling. Except for styling. Jerry might still be out on that, especially considering special editions that are coming out. Maybe you'll like it in different colors. Um, I'll stop being an apologist for the GTI now, I promise. No, you won't. No, I won't. <laughs> um, you knew this was an exciting day for me. Any final thoughts on this Mark 8? Anything we've uh, learned today uh, or just final thoughts in general on it for now? You know, I, I think it's going to be a pretty impressive machine. I'm a little worried about, um, you know, it was always a very bargain, like very 
performance friendly bargain hot hatch. And I sure. don't know that that's going to be quite as much the case. Uh, I think you're probably still going to be able to get uh, better numbers and better, you know, um, quality quantitative data for less price mm -hmm. out of some of the competitors, like especially the Veloster N. I don't think the GTI is going to be able to compete with that on price and power. But that said, you know, you you're still going to get this mini Audi experience, this you know feeling of driving an A4 Avant for literally twenty thousand dollars less, which is which is significant. You know, that's that's attractive to people who daily drive these machines and and everything like that. So it probably will kind of continue in that formula of being a nice premium sport compact car. But I'm a little worried that the price is going to creep up a little bit uh, between generations. So that's that's the only thing that kind of gives me pause. But otherwise, I, I think it looks great. I agree with you. We'll see a, a slight bump in the price. It's all but confirmed. Um, but you're getting more car for your baseline money. Sure. 242 horsepower now. Um, we talked about that driving dynamics manager, which is a big deal. You have the option of a Michelin sticky tire for the first time. Uh, so it seems like they're bringing the GTI into a more modern performance category. And we're really excited to drive it. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. Most definitely. What when will that be? We don't know. Uh, but until then, Brett Evans, thank you for joining me on this first look of the 2022 model year Volkswagen GTI. Thank you.